Yeah, welcome back to the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. We're now talking security now and its security solutions. We're seeing uh, the governor of Kaduna State, Nasu Orufai, making comments on Sheikh Gumi, who visited, you know, bandits and uh, how he's been trying to reconcile and create peace. But uh, Orufai's position is that amnesty for bandits should not be an option and that instead, you know, they should be handed with a high hand or a strong hand. And we've invited Aki Malolu, a public affairs analyst, to discuss this with us. Good morning, sir. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. So where do you stand in this conversation? Do you, do you support amnesty for bandits? Or do you say, you know, let's meet out justice? Uh, the, the conversation um, was between um, Elder... Alaji Abubakar Gumi, uh, Gumi and the res response from the governor of Kaduna State, El Rufai, both are welcome development because they have started a conversation to address the issue of insecurity that has enveloped the nation. So to some extent, I will say that I cannot agree with both leaders until we are able to find out what does banditry consist of and what are the reasons for them. And uh, if we go back to what I will call encapsulated history, we will first identify bandits to be product of poverty, bandits to be product of ill governance, bandits or banditry to be product of stunted growth. And all of these ailments are common in all of our Nigerian states. So, we can say that it is not only the North that has criminalities, we also see them in the South, in the form of cultism, the kidnapping, and all others. But good enough, now that conversation has started among Northern leaders, we should encourage them to sustain the tempo. Thank you. Okay, so when, when you say conversations, um, does that mean in any way negotiating with these bandits? No. In the first instance, it was Sheikh Abubakar Gumi that visited the bandits in their hideouts in Zamfara State. He went with, in companionship with some other religious leaders and some security agents. And when he returned, he told us his findings, one of which was that the bandits are weary and are afraid to even come out of their hideouts. And secondly, the majority of them are illiterates. That means that there has been no nomadic education, there has been no vocation, so they are just bandits, wholly and fully. Now, and the third element, his own appeal to the government of Nigeria to grant them pardon, since they have shown that they are weary of their nefarious and heinous crimes. Then on the other side, Erufai, believed fully that he himself and his companion, the Niger State uh, Governor, will not pardon or allow amnesty program for bandits. Rather, he will have them crossed. But one thing which we must identify, leaders have sacred duties 
we have been in democracy for over for almost 20 years or over. What has been the value we have placed on life? What has been the results of democracy on our people that made them to carry arms against their fatherland? Apart from the bandits, we also have the issue of Boko Haram. So how do we tackle banditry, Boko Haram, farmers, elders, clashes? Are we to bomb them? Yes, we have bombed those in Boko Haram. But this one's in the valley of Kassina. The military knew they were there before Gumi went there. How come they were not bombed? So the government must have seen their presence and they are looking for a way to grant them pardon. That was the reason why Sheikh Abubakar Gumi could have visited them. So, so, so what, 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 you know, would your suggestion be? Uh, because you seem to, you know, be, you know, speaking from, of course, the government's failure, uh, which has led to, of course, the emergence of these bandits, and at the same time, uh, talking about how nefarious the activities have been. So, so where would you, or what would your advice be? Do you think that they should? be understood, you know, because they are illiterate, a lot of them are, and of course government failed them and that's why they took up arms, or do you think that they should be completely wiped out as a, a threat to the Nigerian state? Yes. Misgovernance, ill governance, corruptions, they are all threats to the Nigerian state equally too. We cannot sustain one and vanquish the other. So leaders in the North and in Nigeria as a whole must sit down and reflect on the type of leadership they have given to the generality of our youths and our people. Absolutely. But in the meantime, now we are dealing with severe and very serious security issues in the country. Um, while the governors are reflecting on their failures to, of course, um, you know, provide the dividends of democracy and you know, development to their people, what would your suggestion be for, you know, the security challenges that we're currently dealing with? Do you agree with Sheikh Gumi um, that maybe they should be spoken to and, you know, some level of amnesty or pardon should be given? Or do you agree with El Rufai? That's the point we're trying to get here. Or do you think that both can work hand in hand? Okay. Candidly, uh, we are talking of carrot and stick. But... When you want to bring in those two formulas, you have to, the government must think through a sustainable program, identify those that can be retrained uh, or those that are really involved and they cannot change from their criminal past. The government has a duty. They must not fail in addressing the issue of ignorance, poverty, because if we wipe out, wipe out uh, this, uh, this branch, there are other children growing up. They are going to suffer the same stunted growth. They are going to go to that route, that road of insecure criminality. We will start all over again. So the right thing for us to do is that we must, all leaders must agree on what to do with bandits that are taking the enormous uh, art of our youth. Mm. Either we train them, because if we have given um, uh, what they call uh, pardon to Boko Haram, they said that they have, they have de-radicalized, we could offer the same to the bandits if we accept our guilt as leaders that we have neglected for too long the youth of Nigeria. It is not only in the north. Look at cultism in the south. There are spasms of communal clashes that result into, into bloodletting everywhere across this nation. So we have 
heinous crimes, intolerance, poverty, vicious, you know, they, I mean, those are the conditions you see in a vicious circle. Okay. Mr. Malalu, I understand that we do need a long-term solution to this long-standing issue. But so many Nigerians have the belief that, you know, we know that ambush is a military tactic. And they believe that right there and then when Gumi visited those bandits, they know their hideouts. Why were they not ambushed and captured right there and then? Now, let us look at, there was a conversation before Sheikh Abubakar Gumi. If you recollect, the former chief of army staff, when he visited the president uh, last year, he came to the press and he told the press that they are fighting Nigerian youths and leaders across the nation should engage with the youth to find solution to these children carrying up arms against their fatherland and engaging in kidnapping, banditry, Boko Haram, and all others. Similarly, the present IG who just got his um, tenure extended also visited Shokoto after Burataya has spoken months later or weeks later. And he said that it is not Nigerian youths, they are aliens from outside this country. Now, Gomi has intervened. He has been there. He has, not, he has equally said that it is not only Fulani elements that he's looking at. He's looking at you know, probably some other tribes. So give or take, we have not been able to identify the origin of the people that are settled in Zamfara. Are they mostly Fulanis, or there are Tuaregs there, or there are remnants of Gaddafi army there, or there are Malians rebels there, or there are other tribes in Nigeria who are of different origin to the, from the Fulanis. We have to see the picture is not clear. We are still, candidly, I would say we are, we are not, the, the quality of information we have is not adequate enough but, but for Elrufai, us to be able to take a final decision. But Elrufai is claiming that these people have no religion. He claims that they, they would never leave a lucrative bandit activity that fetches them millions. This is his quote now, that they will never leave a new lucrative way of making millions in Naira and revert to heading cows that fetches less than 200,000 uh, 200, Naira a year. Do you, do you agree with that? No, because El Rufai does not have monopoly of knowledge to say fight into, to, in finality that they cannot change. He, has, he doesn't have it. Because human beings are created with the same size of brain. They, are, they were made rational because God gave us languages. And with language, that is the conduit through which knowledge, reasonable knowledge can be passed to our youth or from one generation to the other. So to conclude just like that, I will tell him as an intellectual who is interested in peace for my country, I do not agree with the position of El Rufai. All right, but, but um, don't you think that this encourages more of these groups? Um, if the Nigerian government continues to fail to step up with regards its education, um, development, social welfare for uh, these people in different parts of the country, including in the South, um, will yeah. the idea that you mentioned earlier de-radicalize Boko Haram, you know, who have once again been accepted back into society according to the government, if we have that same formula for bandits, don't, we, shouldn't see, we give the same see, thing to kidnappers? Can... Shouldn't we give the same thing to every new criminal group that springs up every other month in Nigeria? If governments and leaders in governments continue to sustain their corruption, 
then they must have to buy their comfort. That is just the truth. You cannot be in companionship with corruption on one side and be killing our youth on the other side. If there is no punishment for leaders who, are, who corruptly enrich themselves, then what is the reason for killing these young people when we had fault, when it was our reasons? We are guilty as leaders. That's a very we are guilty. interesting, it's a, it's a very interesting you see, point. You see, what I would like them to do, they have started to think through Im proper imagination. The Northern governors came out recently, at least yesterday to today, that they are going to appreciate ranching and close down open grazing and nomadism. That is one of the solutions to our insecurity problems. Once the cattle are ranched, cattle rustlers will not have, have access to them. Bandits will not mingle with them in the ranch. So bandits will go their separate ways. The security agents will be able to identify them. Look at the ones in Niger states. About 400 will ride on a motorcycle into a community. What has the Air Force done? What are they waiting for? Even the ones in Zamfara, they knew they were there. Somebody negotiated ransom. The Casino State Governor told us that somebody had been foiling it. So leaders too are guilty. They are encouraging criminalities. The only place that, that was a revolt, kind of, was the coming out of uh, Sunday Bowl in Oyo State that helped to reduce the tension that the people had, that has gripped the people. Because insecurity had gained weight everywhere in Nigeria. So if we are going to blame the youths who are in the bandit free profession, what blame do we put at the doorsteps of our leaders? Do we continue to heap the blame on the president who, when he came, he gave soccer, 5,000 naira to the vulnerable. He gave trader money. He gave bailouts. He shared Paris funds. He's doing construction, trying to increase, but I know that they too, they are not doing enough. Mr. Malawi, they, yeah. I, I, I need to ask you this question because it's, it's a burning one on the minds of many Nigerians. There are statistics to show so many Nigerians in prisons, incarcerated, that are innocent or that have been imprisoned for a long time without trial. And these are bandits that we see kill people, tens of, and tens of people every day in Nigeria. There's one on the front page of the newspaper today, bandits killed 23 persons in, in Kaduna. So yeah. what then is the justice if statistics show that we have lots of innocent people in prison or people that have not, you know, been tried? And then bandits, Can people, who, you know, bandits now, we're talking about amnesty, negotiating with them, dialogue. I don't know, how, do you, how should the ordinary Nigerian make sense of these two different issues? Okay, the first issue is the population of youths in Nigerian prisons who are fa facing on ending trial for no just cause. If you look at the answers, one of the reasons for the answers was extrajudicial character of our police. Where they cannot extort money, they take you to the magistrate court and abandon you there. What are what are the civil uh, liberty organizations in Nigeria expected to do? Visit the prisons, look at the cases in the courts, and appear for these young people. On the issue of the Kaduna banditry, let, us, let them patronize the likes of Sunday Bowu, who encourage community participation in securing their environment. We have, a, we have embraced community police. Fine. The community police means 
that the community should be part of securing their own environment. What have right. we achieved in that community policing? All right. Uh, uh, Rufaida wanted the, the, mass, uh, the killing of, uh, arresting killing of bandits. You could recollect some of the statements before. Oh, uh, Mr. Malolo, and unfortunately, we are. The um, accusations on him by Southern Cardona leaders. Yeah, uh, unfortunately, so, we are, I mean, we're out of time. We are all just going oh, round man. and round and round. Nobody is seeking for solutions to the increase. If, if they are about 6 million today and they become 18 million tomorrow, is that how we'll be parabolating? Well, we're out of time, um, Mr. Malolo. Thank you so much. Um, you, Thank you, you so made much. really strong points, and uh, we hope that we can continue this uh, conversation again. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Thank you. The the um, perspective of government taking responsibility and owning up to their failures, I I would agree with True. that. You know, the reason why these things are happening today is mostly because of failure of government. Um, and until the you know that part is spoken about and accepted, that yes, we failed, and that's why they're you know um, here. Um, we might continue to be a you know recurring experience. Um, you, the thing that you mentioned about how unfair it is, you know, that the people in jail that didn't get the same pardon that bandits now <laughs> are getting, also another strong point. Um, and some people will definitely agree. You can't continue to pardon criminals, criminals. and killers and, and bandits and who have, who have exactly. And, and you know, where is justice then for the thousands of families that have been affected by these murderers? Where is justice for those people um, if the next week they wake up and see that all oh, these people have been pardoned and, you know, government has put them, you know, put them in white barbariga and, and white caps and, you know, said that they've been forgiven. It's, it's, um, doesn't seem fair. Anyway, still talking violence. Now we're going to be talking about the Violence Against Persons Prohibition Act, a group that seeks that the bill be passed. Uh, we'll talk about that right after the short break. <laughs>